Theater. It was common for actors to wear a tragic mask with a heavy conical weight called onkos to symbolically represent the psychic load carried by the wearer. This is the derivative root for the modern specialization oncology, with cancer being conceived as the burden carried by the afflicted patient. Texas Oncology, the diamond sponsor for this event, has played a singular role in our community to mitigate this burden on afflicted patients. Our next guest is Dr. Stephen Paulson, President and Chairman of the Board of Texas Oncology. Dr. Paulson is also on the Board of American Cancer Society and is a member of the American Society of Clinical Oncology, Texas Medical Association, American College of Physicians. Texas Oncology is a generous diamond sponsor of this event. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Paulson. Thank you. Uh, it's very much my privilege to be here tonight to represent Texas Oncology. Uh, and I'd like to thank my partners for uh, putting me in this position because they are the ones that really are the driving force behind us participating in the support of this program. I was asked to speak briefly about um, the, the topic of the um, program tonight, which is find cancer, fight cancer. And it's obviously a topic that's near and dear to my heart. It's uh, been the focus of my um, professional endeavors for the last 30 plus years. Um, I think most of you know that cancer is probably one of the most uh, polarizing and, and uh, anxiety provoking uh, diagnosis you can make. There are certainly others that are uh, associated with a great uh, uh, deal of anxiety, but nothing is uh, more likely to provoke fear, anxiety, and concern, uh, concerns about separation from loved ones and such that, that cancer uh, can do. Uh, and by and large, it's a, a diagnosis that at one time was a death sentence uh, and now is a really much more of a chronic illness and in many circumstances a curable disease. The cancer incidence in the United States has actually been falling the last 10 to 12 years, and the death rates have actually been falling as well. Uh, I look at this as a sign that we're actually making some impact in both preventing and finding cancer early, but also in improving the treatment of cancer. Nevertheless, there will be almost 1.7 million people in the United States diagnosed with cancer. This year, there will be almost 600,000 deaths. In Texas, about 117,000 patients will be diagnosed with cancer, and about 45,000 of these folks will, or at least uh, uh, patients will die of cancer in 2014. So what can we do to help find cancer? Well, I, I think uh, when we look at uh, finding cancer, uh, screening programs are probably one of the most important things that can be done to find cancer early. Uh, screening has clearly made a difference in the, uh, the curability of breast cancer with early screening and mammography. Uh, very clearly, we have improved uh, survival in cervical cancer with pap smears uh, and now with HPV testing. We can also uh, clearly improve survival in colorectal cancer with early screening uh, with colonoscopy or flexible sigmoidoscopy. Uh, and now even uh, we can uh, expect to improve survival in uh, lung cancer in patients who are smokers by uh, screening with low-dose CT scan. Uh, early diagnosis of skin lesions uh, with uh, frequent cancer uh, uh, physical exams are also important. Uh, and clearly, uh, screening makes a big difference. But in my mind, probably our best opportunity is in preventing cancer. And I think if you look at the, uh, the data that exists these days, there's clearly an opportunity to prevent cancer by uh, changing the way people live. Uh, very clearly, the most important thing we can do is uh, to reduce people's uh, use of tobacco products. 
Uh, there's uh, nothing, quite frankly, that's better for my book of business than uh, the tobacco industry. And I think uh, most of you would recognize that it supports a lot of the things you do in your line of work as well. Nevertheless, smoking cessation clearly can reduce the risk of cancer. Uh, to the point earlier, weight uh, uh, control uh, very clearly has some role in reducing the risk of cancer. Exercise programs, uh, changing the way people eat, the diets and such, and changing people to uh, diets that have, uh, uh, are rich in uh, vegetables and fruits uh, clearly uh, does make a difference. Looking at people's family history uh, will also make a big difference in terms of looking at genetic testing and programs uh, that uh, look at risk uh, related to uh, diagnosis of uh, existing patients. But there are still going to be a significant number of patients who are diagnosed with cancer. So what's happened in the, uh, the world of cancer care? Well, clearly, uh, cancer has become much more of a chronic illness. The way we treat cancer is uh, uh, evolved significantly. When I went into uh, oncology about 35 years ago, uh, the uh, cliche, uh, when all you got's a hammer, everything looks like a nail, was pretty much the rule. You had a few drugs and you adapted them to uh, treat whatever cancer that you had in front of you. Today, uh, therapy is much more targeted. It's based on a lot more me uh, molecular testing and the ability for us to, to know more about the molecular basis of the, uh, the, the tumor at hand uh, has improved significantly. The uh, number of therapies available are substantially greater, uh, something in excess of 100 different agents uh, that uh, are used in cancer care today. Technology has improved. The uh, technology that we have today uh, once upon a time, radiation therapy was um, um, uh, fairly, uh, fairly crude. Uh, you kind of drew a circle around the target and you kind of shot at it and hope you hit it. And uh, quite frankly, uh, the changes that have happened with IMRT, IGRT, stereotactic radio sur uh, surgery, and even proton therapy has uh, changed substantially the way we treat cancer. But probably the biggest thing that's happened is that um, cancer has moved out of the ivory tower. Once upon a time, uh, certainly when I started, most cancers were treated in uh, either large academic centers or large urban centers. And that's not the case today. Um, cancer care has moved out of those uh, uh, very centralized uh, delivery systems into locations where the patient is much more comfortable getting their care. Uh, they can get their care uh, typically within a few miles of their home, drive right up to the door, walk in, get their treatment, turn around and go home. Uh, this is the evolution of community-based cancer care. And whereas years ago, 100% of cancer care was delivered in an academic center, now 80 to 85% of all cancer care is delivered in a community center. This involves sort of uh, a change in mindset, uh, and it's been uh, a circumstance where even things like clinical trials, which were once only available in uh, highly sophisticated uh, academic centers, uh, now are readily available throughout the community-based cancer uh, delivery system. Uh, even sophisticated uh, therapies such as proton therapy, uh, wherein there were only a few centers in the, the country just a few years ago, uh, even proton therapy is now readily available or will be in a community-based center. I mention this because it happens to be just across the highway from here that we're building our proton center that will serve the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, one of only 14 centers, but, but a center that will have the newest and most advanced therapies available. So what's gonna happen in the future for cancer care? Well, clearly molecular testing will play a central role in what we do with regard to cancer care. And molecular testing is something that is available now uh, on a somewhat limited basis, limited primarily by cost and by insurers' willingness to pay for this. But my expectation is within the next three to five years that this will very clearly be a cost-effective um, test that's available on 
almost every cancer that's diagnosed. Uh, we will not be treating breast cancer or colon cancer or lung cancer going forward. We'll be treating things on the basis of the abnormal pattern of mutations that are present within the cancer. So that's my expectation that we will be more sophisticated. Will we cure cancer? Uh, we won't cure cancer per se. We will cure some cancers. Uh, but cancer is a, uh, is a uh, very diverse group of diseases with a very diverse group of causes. And quite frankly, uh, no one cure will be available. I do think that the organizations such as yours that are in the forefront of primary care, of delivery of services to patients and getting patients into um, uh, a health care uh, continuum uh, is important in terms of early diagnosis and early treatment of these patients. So with that, I thank my partners for their support and for their uh, willingness to participate uh, financially as well as uh, professionally, and I thank you all for your attention. Uh, if you'll stay on. Thank, thank you, Dr. Uh, Paulson. We now request uh, Dr. Anup Kumar Shetty, uh, Kiran Kancharla, uh, Sri Devi, uh, Dr. Sri Devi Chuadi, and uh, Sandhya Bajanki to honor uh, Dr. Paulson. Thank you.